Hey everyone, welcome back to Factor Fictional. I'm your host, Veronica Belmont, and this is the show where we look at the cool tech and science from your favorite TV shows, movies, video games, and comic books, and ask, is this possible? And if not, why not? And this week, I am super excited to say that we are talking about one of my favorite shows on television, Breaking Bad. Of course, Brian Cranston gives a phenomenal performance as Walter White, who is a chemistry teacher brought to a point of desperation by some pretty trying times. And now I have to say, guys, we are definitely going to have some spoilers in this episode. So if you're not pretty caught up, you may want to save this until you've watched all of the episodes on Netflix, because trust me, it is totally worth it to binge watch all of the episodes at once. So today we are talking to Dr. Jovana Gribich, who is a chemistry PhD and also a writer over at Script PhD, to tell us all about the science and chemistry in Breaking Bad. Yovana, how did you get inspired to start learning chemistry? You know, it's funny you should say that uh, in the topic of our conversation. I actually had a wonderful high school teacher that was uh, Walter White-esque <laughs> in nature. He was a little more dynamic, Mr. Bierman, uh, than Walt at the beginning of the series, but that's how I got inspired. We blew things up in chemistry class and we would do colorful reactions. And believe it or not, I was really curious um, uh, where all that stuff came from. So I went ahead and uh, studied chemistry at Northwestern and then uh, went and got my PhD. There's a lot of times that that, uh, that Walt uh, uses science in the show, specifically chemistry, to do a myriad of different things. Uh, for example, when he jump starts a car battery. Um, how realistic was that portrayal? Everything that he does is actually extremely realistic. So what, what Walt is essentially doing in this episode is basically building a very simple circuit. Um, they are stranded in the middle of the desert, um, the car's battery is dead, and they need a way to start it. And so he's building what we call a basic galvanic cell, which has four components. Um, it has an anode, which is of course the negative end, the source of uh, electrons, uh, a cathode, which is going to accept them. Um, he has a, a basic solvent. Um, it's usually a source of electrolytes to get the flow going. And then you cap that circuit off with uh, a conductor of some sort that's gonna help the electrons move along. Now in Walt's case, he builds it in a picture perfect manner. He uses parts from the Winnebago uh, to create his cathode and anode. Um, he soaks a sponge in, I believe, potassium hydroxide as his solvent, and then they have some simple copper wiring. Um, and actually, if you take a look at the galvanic cell that he builds, it's a pretty classic textbook case used in chemistry textbooks. And it adds up to about 2.1 or so volts of power if you add up the half reactions that are happening because of what we call the oxidation and reduction reactions, that's what it adds up to. Now in the episode, Walt tells us that he has enough material to build six of these. And so if you multiply six by 2.1, you basically get about a 12 volt battery that's in your standard automobile. So far so good, right? Right. Here's where the catch actually lies, which is that although his voltage is correct, um, he doesn't have enough uh, amperes in order to actually start the Winnebago. Oh, okay. So your typical car battery, in order to, to cold start the car, needs anywhere from 400 to 600 amps. So in theory, the whole process worked. He just didn't have quite enough power to get him over that hump. Absolutely. In theory, what they did was basically build a perfect circuit and um, quite cleverly uh, actually on the show. But uh, the reality of it would be that, that it probably would not give them the power they need to jumpstart the Winnebago. In season one, we hear a lot about fulminated mercury, and I have to admit that I don't know what that means. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Sure. sure. So basically, uh, it's it's a highly, highly reactive uh, compound, um, very prone to uh, explosion when, uh, when friction uh, occurs. Um, so basically, uh, that's kind of what uh, fulminated mercury is. And now, is it stable enough to, to carry around the way that Walt did? Well, so here, here's the irony. Uh, one of the few things that actually sets off fulminated mercury, one of two things, is either friction, which is rubbing it against another thing, or hitting it uh, against something. So Walt carries it uh, among, I believe in that episode, among a sack of, of other crystals. And so you have 
uh, a lot of friction occurring. Uh, in, in addition to that, um, the drug kingpin, um, I believe uh, Tuco was his name, he handles it quite a bit uh, in, on the table. He, he handles it with his knife and, you know, the, the reality is that it probably would have exploded uh, inside of Walt's sack. Uh, the other reality is that it doesn't look like what Walt made it to be. Oh. So, so fulminated mercury, when it's synthesized and purified properly, it actually comes out looking like a fine white powder, um, which would fool you if your the meth that you were selling looked like a fine white powder, which in some cases it does. Mm -hmm. However, in this case, um, obviously they were trying to convince him that the crystals that they had synthesized um, was, was meth, when in fact it was fulminated mercury. So speaking of giant crystals, of course, Walt and Jesse are out to create the most pure form of uh, methamphetamine, of, of crystal meth that they can that they can possibly create. And so they're using uh, methylamine and phenylacetone. And is that process that they're doing, could that actually create a drug that pure? I'm not asking you to tell me how to make it. I just wanna know if, 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 if it's possible. A lot of people have asked why the show has gone to such lengths um, to procure uh, methylamine. Mm -hmm. um, that's been one of these sort of questions. And especially uh, given the fact that methylamine is actually relatively easy to synthesize. That is and something I was wondering myself. Why don't they just make it? Think about what the end game is for these two gentlemen, is to make thousands of pounds of crystal meth starting from as many pure reagents as possible. Essentially, they'd have to go through thousands of gallons of starting materials just to get to an intermediate point. Um, so as a chemist, what do you think of, of Walt's cooking setup, especially how it has kind of evolved over the past few seasons? Oh, well, I'm impressed. I mean, I think Walt is an absolutely brilliant chemist. I think it's, it's something the show really gets right um, in terms of his character as a scientist. Um, his inquisitive nature, um, his desire to get it perfect. I think that's the one thing that every chemist who watches the show, really it reverberates with them. Uh, if you actually look at the evolution of their cook, um, in the beginning, uh, you know, he was looking at Jesse and, and thinking, what on earth are you doing? And he sort of fixed it enough to get it right. And then he really was like, well, if we're going to make meth, we might as well make it the best way we possibly can. I mean, all morality sort of went out the window and it was the chemistry that was what was interesting to him um, in the end. Is there anything about the show that you think they got completely wrong? Anything, whether it's the chemistry or whether it's the character development, I know you're a huge fan. What do you think they could have done better? I'm not going to say it's perfect, um, but I think of the shows that I personally have watched where they revolve around science, it's remarkable to me, uh, one, how right they do get it, uh, and two, that it's not just a sort of, you know, convenient plot point or, you know, something that's conveniently used to move the show from A to B. In many ways, science is a character in and of itself on Breaking Bad, which I think is absolutely setting a remarkable precedent that has really never been done before. I love how you said that. That's that's exactly perfect. So it sounds to me like the the chemistry, the science in Breaking Bad is factual. It sounds like it's fact. Pretty darn pretty darn realistic. I mean, it, could everything happen exactly the way they do it? Probably not, but let's face it. I mean, we're out here to have fun, right? <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, I didn't really doubt, but it is very cool to know that most of the chemistry in Breaking Bad is pretty darn spot on. So thank you again to Dr. Gribich for coming on the show and telling us all about it. And of course, if you have any ideas for future episodes of Factor Fictional, either send me a tweet at Veronica, or like I said, let me know in the comments. And of course, make sure you look for new episodes every Friday of Factor Fictional right here on TechFeed. Until next time, bye.